Good morning, Straight 12 Geography Learners. Today we'll be starting off with the last segment or last topic in your geography syllabus, namely Economic Geography of South Africa. And we will be looking at the primary sector, specifically looking at agriculture. You need to please once again take note of the following. This is the last topic in your geography syllabus. If it is studied correctly, you can get very easy marks. You need to go through all your concepts related to this topic. You need to go through past exam question papers, specifically question 3 and question 4. The section is usually examined in the form of case studies, graphs, pie graphs, bar graphs and infographs. Let us find out what exactly is it in terms of what we will be studying under the economic geography of South Africa. What is the economy? of a country, what do we refer to or what do we understand by the economy of a country? It is as follows. The economy is a system of activities and people depending on each other to supply their needs. And that is the essence of what we will be going through when we do economic geography of South Africa. Economics, what does economics mean? It's the study of how people produce goods and services. Economic geography, we look at where economic activities are carried out and why certain locations are chosen. We look at a term called gross domestic product, GDP, which is a common term or a common concept that you will be Coming, coming across in each of the sections of this topic, so you need to know it. It is the value of goods and services produced in a country. The gross national product, the GNP, is the value of goods and services produced by a permanent citizen of a country. Now learners, these are just some of the concepts that you need to know under the economic geography of South Africa. You need to go once again, go to your textbook, go to all the other concepts and go through them and see that you know them very well. Again, it is very easy to score marks if you know these concepts. Let us look at firstly, at the, let us look at the economic sectors in our country. In other words, the sectors that contribute to the economy of our country. Let's look at them. And these sectors are very important. You must know them. You actually also study, or some of the, uh, these sectors are also referred to in other, in other subjects that you are doing. So it's not only in geography that you do it, it, it also comes up in, in some of your other subjects. Let's look at the primary sector. And we have already referred to them in when we did settlement geography, refer, we refer to some of them. The primary sector. This sector refers to the exploitation of natural resources. In other words, farming, mining, fishing, forestry and hunting. Everything that comes from nature, it is the primary sector. When people farm, mining, fishing, forestry and hunting, just to repeat. Those are the... This is uh, this is called the primary sector. Let's look at the secondary sector. Secondary sector, where raw materials are changed into something more useful and value. In other words, the processing and manufacturing industry, where people are processing and manufacturing goods. And here we speak of light industries, heavy industries, where people manufacture goods. It's called the process and the manufacturing industry. 
The third industry is called, or sector is called the tertiary sector. This is the provision of services, that is professional, trade and transport, where people, or let us say, where there is the provision of services. The fourth one is called quaternary, quaternary sector. This is usually the intellectual services, example, where research is done, IT, etc. So these four sectors, you must know, they can be examined as a concept and they can examine it, even referring to it uh, as part of a question. Let's look at the following. This is called South Africa's key sectors and how they contribute to the GDP growth. This was just a pie graph where they actually show you how these sectors contribute. This was contribution to the GDP, that's the gross domestic product, in 2013. But let us just look at it. You can see they speak of agriculture, forestry and fishing, 2.2%. If you go to the graph, this is a pie graph, and you can see they can ask a question from a pie graph where data is given. So this is an example of a pie graph. Um, the agri agricultural sector, forestry and fishing, which is primary, the primary sector. In this, in this specific year, that sector contributed 2.2% of the gross domestic product. Right. So there you have it, 2.2, that sector over there. Then mining and quarrying, mining is also a primary sector, and this is the blue over here, that is the primary sector. Manufacturing, secondary sector, 15.2. There you can see the sector over there. Right. Electricity, gas and water, rendering of services, the green over, over there. Right. Construction, right. Wholesale and retail, there you can see. Secondary, transport, Finance, retail business, general government services, personal services, taxes. So in this, in this specific graph, learners, it is actually telling you what is the contribution of the various sectors to GDP. So a question can be asked on the spy graph and you can see data. Here you need to analyze the data. The data is on the graph and all you need to do is you need to look at the graph look at the questions and see the relation between the question and the, and, the, and the graphs so this is again one of the ways in which your questions can be answered and that you need to know let's go to the structure of South Africa's economy the actual structure let's look at the contribution of the different sectors again right if you look at it the primary sector, right? In the primary sector, how many workers basically work here? Now, this was basically just one of uh, one particular year that they looked at the structure of the economy, but the idea is for you to basically just get an overview of what do we mean when we say the contribution of the different sectors. In the primary sector, 1.6 million workers work there, and it's mainly in the agricultural sector and in the mining sector. Right. So when we look at our graph here, you will see at the bottom of the graph, right, you can see the contribution, the primary sector, there you are in that area. That is mainly agriculture and mining. Then we look at the secondary sector and the, that's the percentage of workers in the primary sector, right? But when we look at the percentage, the contribution to the GDP is 10.2%. Then we go to the secondary sector. Here we have more workers contributing to the GDP, and it's mainly 2.6 million. If we go once again, just look at the secondary sector, that's 2.6 six million workers that contribute to the GDP and it's mainly in 
manufacturing and construction. If you go to the uh, graphs over here, it tells you the the 23.5 percent of workers are involved in the secondary in the secondary sector, and they contribute 23.1 percent. Then the last one, tertiary and the quaternary sectors, 6.8 million workers, mainly wholesale and retail. And if you go to this uh, graph over here, you'll see. 62.1% workers in the tertiary activity and it's 66.7% that is the contribution they make to the gross domestic class. So when you look at this you will see that as we move from the primary to the secondary, uh, sorry to the tertiary and quaternary sectors you will see the numbers are increasing. So this is an idea to tell you how our economy is structured in South Africa. Let's look at the contribution by provinces to the gross domestic product. Right. In other words, this is our provinces, as you can see. All of them are here, and we need to look at them individually. This is a graph to show you the, co the, pro the contribution. Now, if you look at it, Gauteng being, uh, we know, is the, biggest, is, a, is the biggest province because it's the commercial hub of the country. And therefore, there would be a bigger contribution to the economy. Right. Look at the primary sector, look at the secondary sector, and look at, most important, the tertiary sector. Because... The tertiary and quaternary sectors in this province will be very, very high. It's the economic hub. Many people have jobs that are of a very, very high quality, right? And they also earn the bulk of wages, very good, uh, not wages, salaries that they earn in, 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 in this, in this uh, province. The second province is Western Cape. And there you can see their contribution. KZN is the third one. And then we have Mpumalanga, Northwest, Eastern Cape, Free State, Limpopo, and the Northern Cape. And when you go through all of these provinces, you will see by far that the tertiary sector is contributing a lot more to the GDP. And this is because as time has gone by, the sector has increased considerably. Again, here is a graph in front of you. It's a bar graph, learners. And take note, they can ask, the examiners can ask, or this part can be examined, examined using this type of graph. Here's another pie graph, and this is to show our population by provinces. This is just a, a population uh, a, um, a graph, pie graph, and questions can be asked in, on pie graphs as well. I have now showed you a bar graph, a pie graph, and this is to make you aware of basically how the different graphs are presented. Please familiarize yourself with us in this sector, in this section. Let's look at how the economic structure has changed. This is just an example to show you how the economies are changing or how our economy has changed. In 1946, right, look at the primary sector was at 23%. Our secondary sector was at 21%. Our tertiary uh, sector was at 56%. But if you look at 2004, and even if you go right up to uh, presently, the sector, the tertiary sector, has increased by far. So we will see that the 19 in 2004, your agriculture, your primary sector, can you see, has decreased considerably, and our secondary sector has increased. This sector has decreased, and we'll find out later why, because of the following, that. More people are now in the tertiary sector, 
But as we go along with the lesson, we will explain this to you as well. Here's another um, way in which we've presented data here again in the form of a pie graph. Let's look at the primary sector. We're talking there again of farming and mining. We look at these two. My, uh, farming and mining. Let's look at the importance of the primary sector. What role do they play? It's important that we should know this. It provides food. It provides raw materials for factories. It provides the coal to generate power. It provides valuable export products. It provides employment. It stimulates the development of infrastructure. It stimulates the development of industries. Let's look at agriculture. Because agriculture is one of uh, the industry, the, the one of the sectors that we we discover that we um, study under the primary sector. Right. Let's look at agriculture more closely and see basically what it entails. The main agricultural products in South Africa are your field crops, example, maize. We have behind that science and art is behind fruit flowering and vegetable farming and we've got wine as well. We've got animal products, example, your meat and wool. Let's look at farming as well, here under this product. Farming, definition of farming, when we do agriculture, because we're doing farming, it is the production of goods, production of crops for local and overseas markets to make a profit. It's only practiced on a commercial level because it's large scale. Then we have small scale farming. It's farming on smaller plots of land with the purpose of making a profit. It can be practiced on a commercial or subsistence level. Okay. Let us just look at these two factors, commercial or subsistence level. We will, we will discuss them later. Technology, how does that contribute? contribute? We mod, in the modern era, we make use of scientific farming methods. And here we use chemicals, fertilizers, hybrid seeds, livestock, crop spraying, genetically modified seeds, contour plowing, capital intensive, use of high-tech machi machinery. Small scale, specialized farming, use of irrigation, small dams, intensive farming, every available piece of land is used. So what we basically dis discussed here, people, is when we look at farming, when we look at commercial farming, it's usually, main aim is to make a profit and it's usually practiced on a large scale. And that is why we looked at this specific column over here, large scale. This is what commercial is, is uh, farming is all about. Subsistence farming is usually small scale and this is basically what it entails. Then subsistence farming. Let us look at it closely. It's farmers who produce sufficient crops for the needs of their families only. Usually mixed farming, in other words, they plant a variety of crops and that is why they use every piece of land, this farmer. And it's usually small farms. There's usually communal land ownership and traditional techniques are used. This is the characteristics of subsistence farming. The next type of farming is commercial farming. It is farming that is conducted in order to sell the produce. They specialize in fewer products, large farms. Commercial farming, farming that is conducted in order to sell the produce. It specializes in fewer products, large farms, new techniques, more infrastructure, Farm names and private land ownership. So 
these two type of farming methods is in very important learners you must know the difference between subsistence farming and commercial farming let's look at subsistence farming closely you see there a picture of many people farming a specific uh, piece of land there you find it and usually you can see many people. This is subsistence farming and you can see uh, the crop that is usually farmed in the slabs. It's ri rice, it's probably a rice pad, but you can see that it's a traditional method that is used. In most instances, you see there's no machinery here on this, with this type of farming. There's no capital involved. It's usually your cereals, rice etc. that can be farmed, vegetables. Then we go to commercial farming. There you have your machinery that they're showing you and you can see large tracts of land. Modern machinery is used. It specializes in certain products. It can be maize farming, etc. It's cultivating lands and pastoral farming, farming and scientific methods are used like we've, we basically alluded to in the previous slide. It's market orientated, in other words, it's, it's there to make a profit, to go and sell on the market. Extensive farms are large farms using low inputs per hectare. Mechanization reduces labor use sheep, cattle and game farm. This is extensive farms. Right. And therefore you also need to know what we refer to as extensive farming. Intensive farming. Intensive farming is usually small farms using high levels of input. They produce high yields of high value goods. It's near to market areas. That can be a form of intensive farming. Then the machinery, what, what, what do they contribute? Machinery is used in most instances in commercial farming, which is highly intense. But there you can see large tracts of land is basically used. Yeah. This is commercial farming. They use machinery and large tracts of la lands, land uh, is farmed and most of the cr crop is destined for the market. Storage, large storage facilities is um, is needed for this. As it's, it's needed for this type of farming, right? And there you see um, silos where grain is basically stored, right? Now we come to the following: What are the factors that favour agriculture in South Africa? And this is very, very important. This is very important, uh, uh, learners. You must know the factors that favor agriculture in South Africa. Climate. You've got a favorable climate that, w the, that is responsi uh, responsible, uh, that favors our agriculture. A range of climates makes it possible for many products to be farmed. Right? Most arable areas have at least 200 frost-free days. In other words, frost does not basically influence the farming. There is basically there are 200 frost-free days, and because of that um, favorable farming, it, it, it actually favors good farming conditions. Our temperatures are neither too hot nor too cold. Subsistence farming, farmers have developed coping methods of dealing with moderate droughts. Improved climate research has made drought prediction more accurate. So when we look at the factors favoring agriculture, we started off with the first one, climate. 
and under climate, these were the factors. And then our last one over here is, is the East Coast, because on the East Coast we have warmer weather conditions, favored by a warmer climate, high temp higher temperatures, it allows for, it has no frost, it allows for tropical fruits to grow, such as avos and mangoes, because of the type of climate that you have on the East Coast. There's also high rainfall on the East Coast, and that favors sugarcane farming. Then we have the Southwestern Cape on the West Coast. It has a winter rainfall, a Mediterranean climate because it has a winter rainfall. And here wine is a favorable product. Rivers and lakes can supply additional water. Then we come to soils. How does soil favor our farming, our agriculture? Much of the landscape we we have our products, much of the landscape is flat, that favors agriculture. Neutral soils across the country, it is suited to livestock and mixed farming. Exotic crops introduced can produce higher yields. Let us look at ownership of land. Large commercial farms across the country. We have a number of large commercial co uh, farms across the country. Irrigation, watering of crops, genetically modified crops and pesticides. Is found here water from transfer schemes. Example, the Lesotho Island scheme. Trade. The European Union and South Africa have no trade restrictions. Import duties are limited. The Northern Hemisphere relies on South African products in their winter. In other words, wool. And just to make learners aware, with wool, the largest producers are in the Southern Hemisphere and the largest consumers of wool are in the Northern Hemisphere. Factors that hinder, in other words, factors that don't favor agriculture in South Africa. Learners, please, NB, very important. Again, let's look at the climate. We do have a situation where, in some seasons, we have drought conditions. An example is the drought that we had a year or two ago in the southwestern Cape, and that had a drastic effect on the uh, agricultural sector in the Western Cape. We, at the, at, uh, in the pre at the present moment, we also have droughts uh, in parts of the Eastern Cape as well, and this has definitely had an impact on the, ag and the agricultural sector in these areas. South Africa's rainfall, annual rainfall is 495 millimeters per year, and the world average is supposed is actually 850 millimeters of, per year. West Coast, our West Coast, is dry with high evaporation rates and farming is difficult. Frost is common on our, plat our, on our plateau. Subsistence farmers are at risk of droughts, which I've already um, explained to you. The soils, in terms, only 7% of the land is arable. Only 7% of the land is arable. Many arable areas are too densely populated for farmers to develop commercial farms. Many arable areas are also too densely populated for farmers to develop commercial farms. 
Soils are thin, especially those on steep slopes. Alkaline pH is greater than 7. The soils on the west coast coast mean fewer crops can grow. Severe overgrazing and poor farming techniques has damaged soils. Some of our exotic crops like maize produce good yields in, in years with enough rain, but it can be very poor in times of drought, which I have already alluded to. Poverty seriously limits agricultural development. The ownership of land, we have a problem with land tenure, which we already spoke to you about under settlement geography, nationalization, farm attacks, which is becoming it's common in South Africa, then trade, subsidies after 1980 decreased, Foreign competition is often a serious hindrance. Fluctuation in maize price has hurt farmers. Now we come to a very important aspect, and this is food security. Learners, you need to know what is the definition of food security. When It means when all people have access to nutritious, food to meet their needs for a healthy and productive life. This means if everybody, everybody should have enough food that is nutritious for them to be able to have a healthy and productive life. And that is what we call food security. What is food security and how does it basically contribute uh, uh, to our uh, country and basically to people? Food insecurity is the opposite of food security. It exists when people live in fear of hunger and starvation. It's basically when people are hungry and the starvation exists. That is basically what you see in countries especially where we have problems such as malnutrition as well. As many as 39% of our population in our country lives with food insecurity. This is a reality and learners you need to go to your newspapers, you need to go to the internet and you can actually go and research up on food security and food insecurity and look at it in the world and specifically in your country and see how this is this how has this affected affected people's lives what is the importance of food security in south africa Food needs to be available on a national and a household level. It means our farmers must be able to produce enough food so that people can buy food and have it readily available for consumption. Foods must be accessible on a sustainable basis to households and at national level. It means that, number one, it must be accessible and sustainable. It must be there continuously for households and at, uh, and at national level. Foods must also be affordable. Food supply must be reliable and produced under safety regulations. Food must be distributed so that the country is food secure in all areas. What is the factors, what are the factors that influence food security in our country? Climate effects such as 
floods or droughts. We've spoken about uh, floods or droughts already, and you've also learned about floods and droughts. You went through the specific aspects. You went through this in your grade 11 syllabus as well. High fuel prices makes food products more expensive to transport. High levels of HIV AIDS lowers productivity and yields. These unstable socio-political environments which threatens our food security. Imbalances in trade means that consumers push prices. Lack of natural resources hampers the ability to grow food. Population growth. As population grows, so must food supply. Now, just to say something about our factors influencing food security. If you look at all these factors, learners, it is basically factors that you can actually apply to your present context that you are living in in our country. You read your newspapers and see how you can actually apply these factors in the present situation we find ourselves in, related to your context. Let's look at challenges facing South African agriculture again. We've gone through them already, so we won't be going through them uh, again. You have done them in the previous slides. Now we're going to look at how this section is basically, how can it be asked in the exams? We, we look at um, an example, it's been taken from a previous question paper, where they actually examined or tested your concepts. And it can be asked in the following way. They asked um, the following, the examiners, the, it was examined in the following way. The sum total of income earned in one year in a country, they speak of the GDP. So you had to go to the concepts. They, they give you all the concepts and you need to relate the concepts and then you need to give take from the statements from the terms below and you might need to match it to that. Where workers have no legal rights, that's the informal sector. The process where the economic value of all is improved so that it results in higher export value. Beneficiation. These industries do not uh, do not have to be near raw materials or markets to exist. It's called footloose industries. When entrepreneurs produce products which are originally bought in from other countries, import replacements. When all people at all times have access to sufficient and nutritious food, we call that food security. The process of redistribution of functions, powers, people away from a, a focal location, it's decentralization. When one currency is changed for another, that is called foreign exchange. Now, learners, this, this is just an example of the way in which your concepts can be asked. And it counts eight marks. So it's important that you know your concepts, like I've already uh, I, I, I told you what to do and go through question papers and see if you can find these type of questions not only for uh, uh, this section but for all your other sections go see w what type of questions uh, you can get that is similar to this and you'll see how easy marks are scored our next uh, section that we're going to do. In other words, the next possible questions or the next way in which questions can be asked is this is taken also from a previous question paper. Here again they give you a diagram which illustrates the key sectors of the South African economy. And here you can see they give you bar graphs and they give you 
information. And this is a, a graph, or, or let us say this is a diagram, where they give you a lot of information. They're giving you bar graphs, they're giving you um, percentages. Um, they're actually giving you also the different key sectors of the economy. Let's look at them. They give you, in one part of the graph, of the diagram, it's quarter on quarter growth for the entire co economy. So they give you the quarters for the different years, right? For 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, they give you another part of the, of the diagram is um, the primary sector, Growth, agricultural, agriculture, growth, mining, growth. They go to the secondary sector, manufacturing, electricity, construction, and it gives its growth. They go to the tertiary sector, transport, finance, personal services, government, trade, and its growth. So here you can find a typical example of a diagram that illustrates the key, uh, um, key illustrating key structures of the economy. Let's look at the questions that they can possibly ask on this diagram. They say list the following from the data that is provided. It says the year in which the first quarter shows a negative growth. So if we go to the diagram, and it says the year, the first quarter, yeah, here's the first quarter of 2014, this is the first quarter, you can see it showed a minus 1.8% growth, if you compare it to the other quarters. So in 2014, the first quarter showed that, that growth. So it means you need to study the diagram carefully. The year in which the first quarter, that then it says the economic activity that shows a positive growth in the secondary activity. Then it goes on. If you go to the secondary, here we go to the secondary activity. Yeah. And the question it's asked was the the, econo uh, the economic activity that shows a positive growth in the secondary secondary sector. So if you go to the secondary sector, which one showed a positive growth? We should go through all of them. It was manufacturing. Then it says refer to the second quarter economic growth from 2012 to 2015. Mention the general trend in the economic growth from 2012 to 2015. Right. And if you look at this, it will tell you the following. Um, negative growth, it was showed negative growth because both the primary and the secondary sectors experienced a huge 14% negative growth compared to the 1%, 1.1% positive growth rate of the tertiary sector. Right. The next, the next section says V, um, calculate the difference in the economic growth rate between the second quarter of 2014 and 2015. V, it gives you the following. If you look at it, there might be more imports than exports, if you calculated it. Then it says, using the data provided by the different economic sectors, discuss the economic growth rate in the second quarter of 2015. It also goes on to say, suggest a reason why trade in the tertiary sector may have been recorded as a negative economic growth rate. Analyze the impact that the negative growth rate of agriculture might have on the broader population of South Africa if this trend can
continues. Again, learners, what I want you to go through is please go through the answers that has been given to you in the next slide. But most important, please take note of the mark allocation for this question alone. If you look through the question, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and four is ten, and that will give you 14. Just to analyze data actually gives you 14 marks completely just for this question. So this is an idea that you need to know, or you, this is the idea that I am trying to make you aware of, that this section you can easily score marks by just going through all your question papers and looking at the way the questions are asked. Most of these questions will be accompanied by a graph or in the form of pie graphs or a case study. Case study where you have to read through and you have to extract the answers from the case study. So learners, having said that, our next section that we will be going through will be the uh, second um, product under prime, under the primary sector we've done agriculture we will be doing mining in our next lesson so you need to please go through mining go to your textbooks go to question papers and see that you revise that before we do our lesson having said that once again i want to please remind you go through your concepts again and make sure that you revise the section that we've completed before we start our next lesson. Thank you.